Hi, I'm Aurora Pujol. I'm a geneticist working at Edi Valley in Barcelona, Spain. Our lab is interested in genetic disorders of the brain white matter. Today, I want to share our latest success story. It's about the power of clinical genomics and its impact on healthcare. It's about a global collaboration with patients from four continents to identify a novel ultra-rare disorder, and it's about modeling disease modeling in zebrafish. Our study started with a collection of some 300 undiagnosed cases of leukodystrophies in Spain, for which we run whole exome sequencing. We analyze the data with our own algorithm, which uses human phenotype ontology terms. In one case, we spotted an homozygous loss of function variant on a gene not associated to disease previously, the DEGS1 gene of sphingolipid metabolism. This function of this pathway is found in neurological disorders such as Neiman Peak, Rabe, or metacobatic leukodystrophy, so we had a good feeling to be on the right track. We contacted our collaborators Odile Bosfluktangi in Paris and Ali Fatemi in Baltimore, who run reference centers for leukodystrophies, as well as the NIH program for undiagnosed diseases, asking for second cases, and found a total of 18 additional patients. Hi, I'm Dr. Ali Fatemi. I'm a pediatric neurologist at the Moja Center for Leukodystrophy at the Kennedy Krieger Institute in Baltimore, Maryland, in the United States. We identified two uh, individuals here that were siblings that had variants in the just one gene, and through gene matcher we were able to identify the other individuals uh, worldwide, and uh, this collaboration started on that basis. This is a young child, a boy, who is um, having severe atrophy of his muscles. You see some nystagmus in his eyes. Uh, there is some facial weakness with a tented lip. You can see the, uh, in his back uh, the scoliosis and some hirsutism, and again the cachexia. Um, when you look at his feet, there is scissoring of his legs, extensive posturing, spontaneously upgoing toes, and severe atrophy of the muscles. My name is Mark Patterson. I'm a child neurologist at Mayo Clinic, part of the collaborative team who investigate and manage children and adults with suspected inborn errors of metabolism. The cases we're presenting today are a great example of our collaborative work. These were two brothers who presented to us at age one and four respectively with nystagmus and the subsequent evolution of a syndrome characterized by global developmental delay, hypotonia, limb spasticity and varying degrees of dysarthria and dysphagia. Both boys were hypopigmented at birth but showed gradual increase in pigmentation over time. They had dramatically abnormal MR images which I will share with you now. This series of T2 weighted axial images was obtained from the older brother at two years and two months of age. On such images mature myelin should appear hypo-intense, but you will see here at the arrow that normally myelinated structures are iso or hyper-intense with grey matter, suggesting hypomyelination. We notice as well there is signal iso or hyper-intensity throughout the temporal lobes, throughout the cerebral hemispheres. There's a little mature myelin occurring here in the basal ganglia and adjacent to the posterior limb of the internal capsule, but overall the picture is one of diffuse hypomyelination. We then obtain fibroblasts from patients' biopsies and use a targeted lipidomics approach to quantify the substrate, the dehydroceramides, and the product, the ceramides, detecting three to eight-fold altered ratios in the patients. We found in the literature a drug in use for multiple sclerosis, fingolimod, who may inhibit the enzyme prior to the AGS1, the ceramide synthase. We thought that accumulation of the hydroceramides may exert toxic effects to the nervous system, and decreasing the substrate could ameliorate the patient's phenotype. As a proof of principle, we use zebrafish to model the disease and assay for fingolimod with very exciting results. The Clinics is a biotech company that uses zebrafish for uh, understanding human disease and finding new treatments. We use a video tracking platform for measuring locomotion alterations, which is a powerful readout for getting insights into neural function. Here we see control, disease, and disease larvae with different concentrations of fingolimod. 
we see a restoration of neural activity in treated larvae. As this is a leucodystrophy, we have also looked at myelin producing cells, the oligodendrocytes. Our results show a clear decrease of oligodendrocytes in diseased larvae and a restoration of the numbers in treated larvae. We are grateful to our funding sources, as La Maratodo TV3, FIS, Ciberair, Speria Foundation. They made all this possible. We hope that this type of studies favor the use of exomes as a first-year test in neurogenetic disorders in Spain as well. Today, we are preparing a compassionate trial in these patients using Fingolimod, which is a relatively safe drug. We are hopeful. Thank you for your attention.